Hi everyone, we're here today to talk a little bit about the importance of dry matter and calculating nutrition values on a dry matter basis versus an as-fed basis. First, we should define these concepts. All feed consists of two things, dry matter and water. Water, while vital to the survival of our animals, does not contain any of the protein, fat, fiber, or other nutrients that we are looking for when calculating a diet. This is what the dry matter contains. So, you might infer that differing amounts of water in different kinds of feed can distort the values of these nutrients that we're looking at. Intuitively, you know when you're looking at a food that's 10% water and a food that's 40% water, if both of them have 6% crude protein on an as-fed basis, they don't really have the same amount of protein because of the differing amounts of water. This is made much clearer when you use visual examples. Here are some pie charts of the percent of dry matter versus the percent of water in legume in pasture, legume silage, and legume hay. These values were taken from the NRC's nutrient requirements of horses. You can see that hay has very little water, pasture has a lot of water, and silage gives us a nice little intermediate to look at. I've also included a chart that includes the values for digestible energy, crude protein, fat, NDF, ADF, and ASH for all three of these feeds. I got the dry matter percentage directly from the NRC's nutrient requirements of horses, but this publication provides these values in, on a dry matter basis. So I went ahead and calculated the as-fed values so that I can show you guys how to do these calculations and so that they can hopefully make sense to you. So, if I compared these foods on an as-fed basis to formulate a diet, I would be inaccurate, as I would not be accounting for differing proportions of water in the feeds. Remember, percentages are proportions, so if water is taking up more of the feed, then it will skew our proportions of the other nutrients. Thus, we compare feeds on a dry matter basis. We do this by removing water. Now, I'm going to do the math for this a couple of different ways to hopefully make this concept clear for you. So one way to look at this concept is in terms of each nutrient and how many parts it is out of. Now our original percent for crude protein in legume forage pasture is 5.67%. Once again, percentages are just proportions, so we can also say that in 100 parts of feed, we have 5.67 parts of crude protein. 5.67 parts in 100 parts gives you 0.0567 or as you guys know you can multiply that by 100% to get 5.67%. Make sense? So if I want to figure out how much crude protein there is in dry matter, I need to look at how many parts of dry matter we have. So looking at the dry matter for our pasture, we note that pasture is 21.4% dry matter. So we know that in the 100 parts of feed, we have 21.4% excuse me, 21.4 parts of dry matter. We also know that we still only have 5.67 parts of CP, but it's going to only be present in the dry matter because no matter how much water there is, there's never going to be crude protein in water. So we still have 5.67 parts of crude protein, but now it's going to be concentrated just in that dry matter. So if we want to figure out the crude protein on a dry matter basis, we take those 5.67 parts of crude protein and put it into the 21.4 parts of D dry matter. And we end up getting 0.265 or 26.5%, which matches up exactly with the value given by the NRC's nutrient requirements of horses. You can perform a similar example on another nutrient. So here's you'd, how you'd go about solving for ADF on a dry matter basis for legume forage hay mid-mature. So we have 28.02% ADF in hay, and I have 83.9% dry matter. That means that in 83.9 parts of dry matter, 28.02 parts of that will be ADF. So if I want my percent of ADF on a dry matter basis, I can take that 28.02 parts 
and divide it by the 83.9 parts it'll be a present in, and I get 0 0.334 or 33.4%, which once again matches up with the value given by the NRC book. Now, I want you guys to be able to have a shot of this on your own. So here's the information for all of the feeds, and I want you guys to tell me in legume forage silage, what is the percent of fat on a dry matter basis, and what is the percent of ash on a dry matter basis? Take a couple minutes to give this a shot, see if you can get it done. Answers will be at the end of the video. You can also do direct conversions of as fed to dry matter rather than thinking in parts. The first thing you should remember when trying this method is that when doing any calculations with percentages, you need to put them into decimals. This means that whenever you're calculating with the dry matter percentage, you'll be using a number less than one. So let's think about this mathematically. If we're looking at a nutrient on an as-fed basis, there is water in the feed. The water is, if this helps your thinking at all, in a sense diluting the nutrient percentage. So if you take away the water, the percentage of that nutrient will go up because the water, which is adding none of that nutrient, has been removed. So you have the same amount of nutrient in less feed. Thus, when we convert from an as-fed to a dry matter basis, your individual nutrient percentages should go up. So if we have a nutrient percentage and we have the dry matter percentage, all we have to do is divide that nutrient percentage by the dry matter percentage, and that will give us our percent nutrient on a dry matter basis. Now I'm going to use the same example as we used in the parts example so that you guys can see that both of these work. So if I go look at the crude protein in legume pasture, I note that I have 5.67% of crude protein in 21.4% dry matter. So following the formula that I gave you guys on the previous slide, all we need to do is divide this percent crude protein by our percentage dry matter, and we're going to do that in decimals, so by 0 0.214, and that gives us 26.5% crude protein, which is the exact value that we got before. So you guys probably noticed that I kept the percentage in one of the values, but I converted the other to a decimal. This is because I'm actually doing the math with the dry matter percentage, so I put that in a decimal because that makes it easier to convert and I'm treating the percentage in the crude protein as a sort of unit. So I can keep the percentage with the crude protein and it should all work out just fine, which it did here. If you guys are not really understanding why I did decimal places in one but not in the other, you can also convert both to decimal places and divide 0 0.0567 divided by 0 0.214. And what you should get is 0 0.265 which if you multiply by 100% to get a percentage, which is what you want in the end, the exact same value as before. So feel free to do it however you guys want. I tend to enjoy doing the first way better because it skips a step for me. And note, as I mentioned before, that you are using a number less than one when you're dividing. So our nutrient percentage goes up like we predicted earlier. So to get from an as-fed basis to a dry matter basis, you just divide by dry matter percentage. So to go the other way, we do the opposite. We multiply the dry matter basis by the dry matter percentage to obtain our nutrient percentage on an as-fed basis. We'll once again use an example from the earlier parts portion to illustrate this concept. So we know that there's 33.4% ADF on a dry matter basis in legume forage hay, and we know that the dry matter percentage is 83.9. Thus, to get the percentage of ADF on an as-fed basis, we can multiply 33.4% by 0 0.839, which gives us 28.02%, which, if you look back at our chart, is exactly the value we wanted. Now, I did the same exact thing with percentages as I did on the earlier example. So once again, if you're uncomfortable with this way of doing things, you can do 0 0.334 times 0 0.839, and you'll end up with 0 0.2802. And once again, just remember to get it into a percentage, and you'll get the exact same value as you did before. 
So this change makes sense, right? Remember, when you're going from dry matter to as fed, all you're adding is water, which will add nothing to the nutrient percentages, but is increasing what's in your feed. The same amount of nutrients in more feed, in a sense, means decreased percentages. Now, let's have you give it a shot on your own. So what is the percent NDF on a dry matter basis in legume forage hay mid-mature? And for another example, if I have some oats that have 13.6% crude protein on a dry matter basis and have a dry matter percentage of 91%, how much crude protein do I have on an as-fed basis? Once again, all answers will be at the end of the video. Okay, so it's all well and good knowing how to make the conversions, but the real question is why are we making these conversions? We touched on it a bit earlier, but to reiterate, putting everything on a dry matter basis puts everything on equal footing. This allows you to calculate diets and be able to compare how nutrient dense these feeds are and which ones would be most cost effective if you're given a, a price for each of these feeds. So I'll give you guys a little bit of an example. Um, I do not have prices available at the moment, but just looking at our previous legume forage, hay, pasture versus silage, you can notice some interesting things. Now, here's the chart on an as-fed basis. It's the one that we've been using th for the majority of this video. So just looking at this, let's look at crude protein, for example. Looking at this on an as-fed basis, you may think, wow, if I really need to give my horse a lot of protein, hay is definitely my best option out of these three because it's going to give me the most. And Let's say they were similarly, similarly priced. You would definitely want to go with the hay because, hey, that gives your horse more protein. However, as fed is not a great way to compare because you don't know what actually might be present in the dry matter. You may just be getting a lot of water in the pasture or silage that's diluting your concentration of nutrients. So I'm going to remake this table on a dry matter basis. Now when we take a look at our crude protein, the graph tells a very, very different story. It is not, in fact, our hay that has the most crude protein, it's our pasture. Hay actually has the least. So, if all of these feeds were similar cost, you would want to actually put your horse on pasture, not on hay. So, hopefully this example can demonstrate one of the reasons why it's really important to compare feeds on a dry matter basis rather than an as-fed basis. Hopefully you can use this knowledge to more accurately meet the nutrient needs of your animal and understand what your animal is truly getting from the feed you are giving it. All right, hopefully you were able to get these answers correct and hopefully you were able to get some useful information out of this video to help you in your future endeavors. Thank you so much for watching.